In this video, we're looking at question one on paper one of the 2021 Leaving Cert higher level paper. This is the complex numbers question. Uh, the first part has it set up as a fraction equal to zero plus ki. A couple of different ways you can do it. You can use your division of complex numbers if you want, multiply the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, or you can use your identities similar to your algebraic identities that you might have studied. So that's the method I'm going to approach here. So I'm going to have four minus two i all over two plus four i equal to zero plus ki. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that zero plus ki over one and I'm going to cross multiply. When I multiply one by four minus two i, I get four minus two i is equal to uh, zero plus ki multiplied by two plus four i. Now you can drop that zero if you wish. So that's going to give me four minus two i is equal to ki multiplied by two, which is two ki, and ki multiplied by four i is plus four ki squared. Next thing I'm going to do now is compare uh, the reals with the reals and the imaginaries with the imaginaries. First of all, though, I'm going to isolate this i squared. I'm going to turn that into negative one. So that's giving me four minus two i is equal to two k i plus four times negative one. And to rewrite that, it's four minus two i is equal to minus four uh, k. There should be a k there. Minus four k. Uh, plus 2ki. And like I said, now I'm going to match the reals with the reals. So 4, positive 4 matches with negative 4k. And then I'm going to match the imaginaries with the imaginaries. So I'm going to come up here to the right hand side. So that means, so therefore, I'm sorry about that, uh, 4 is equal to minus 4k. So k is equal to dividing both sides by negative 4. So k is equal to negative 1. Now you can check it with the uh, imaginaries if you want. Let's just check it. So we have minus two i uh, is equal to two uh, k i. I'm going to divide across by i, so I'm cancelling the i from both sides. So that leaves me with minus two is equal to two k. So k is equal to negative two over two. So k is equal to negative one. So we've done it both ways. You don't need to do both. Uh, but that's the solution to question 1a. Moving down now to part b. So part b wants us to find the square root of minus 5 plus 12i in the form a plus bi. So what I'm going to do there is let them equal to each other. So I have a plus bi. And I know that that is going to equal the square root of negative 5 plus 12i. Now to get rid of a square root, we know we square... Uh, both sides. So I want to isolate that square root. So I'm going to multiply across by the square root of two or from the square of two. So that's giving me a plus bi all to be squared is equal to negative five plus 12i. Now I'm going to multiply out that square on the left hand side. So it's a plus bi times a plus bi equal to negative five plus 12i. When I multiply out my two brackets on the left, I get a squared minus b squared plus 2abi equals negative 5 plus 12i. Now just watch when you're multiplying out those two brackets that you will get minus, uh, or sorry, plus bi squared and the i squared will turn into negative 1. So that's where the minus b squared will come from. Again, I'm going to use my identities. I'm going to pair up the reals with the reals and the imaginaries with the imaginaries. So I have a squared minus b squared is equal to negative 5. So that's the first thing I know. So therefore, a squared minus b squared is equal to negative 5. And I also know the imaginary parts. I have positive 2ab i is equal to 12i. If I look at the left hand side, the real parts, first of all, I'm going to uh, isolate, I'm just going to have it as a squared. You can have it as b squared equals two if you want. I'm going to go a squared is equal to negative five. Moving over to minus b or adding b squared to both sides gets me minus five plus b squared. On the imaginary parts, I'm going to divide across by i, so they'll cancel. So that leaves me with two ab is equal to 12. And I want to write 
a is equal to, so I'm going to divide across by uh, 2b, so a is equal to 12 divided by 2b. Now again, I'm writing them in terms of a and b, you can go the opposite, so it's up to you. So when I divide that in, I can simplify that fraction 12 over 2 is the same as 6 over 1b, or just 6 over b. So I have now written a as 6 over b, and I have a squared written as minus 5 plus b squared. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a little bit of simple substitution. I'm going to sub in my value for a into the real part. So I have a squared equals minus 5 plus b squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in my 6 over b for a. So subbing in my 6 over b for a, so 6 over b squared. And that is equal to minus 5 plus b squared. And when I square out my 6 over b squared, that's going to give me 36 over b squared is equal to negative 5 plus b squared. I'm going to put that as a fraction, so I'm going to put it over 1, and again I'm going to do some cross multiplication. Now when I cross multiply, that's going to give me 36 is equal to negative 5b squared plus b to the power of 4. And I'm going to move everything to one side, so rearranging the right hand side, that gives me b to the power of 4 minus 5b squared minus 36 is equal to 0, and I'm just going to put the 0 to the rear, so b, b to the power of 4 minus 5b squared minus 36 is equal to 0. Now, it's starting to look like a quadratic, except the highest degree is to the power of 4, so I'm going to use some u substitution here, so I'm going to let u is equal to b to the power of 2. So I can now rearrange my equation there to become u to the power of 2 minus 5u, because u to the power of 2 is equal to b squared, and minus 36 is equal to 0. Now again, I'm using u substitution. You don't have to. You can find a different way if you prefer. If I find my factors, I'm going to get the multiples of 39 that add to negative 5, which are negative 9 and positive 4. So therefore, u is equal to positive uh, 9, and u is equal to negative 4. Okay, so we have our values for u. I don't need the value for u, I need the value for b. So I'm now going to solve for b. So I'm going to come up here to the right hand side. So I have u is equal to 9, and I have u is equal to negative 4. So therefore, to find the value of b, don't forget that u was b squared. So that means that b squared is equal to 9. So b is equal to the square root of 9. So b is equal to plus or minus 3, and u is equal to, uh, sorry, b squared is equal to negative 4. So b is equal to the square root of negative 4, which is b is equal to the square root of 4i, so the negative, the square root of the negative will become i, so that's giving me b is equal to plus or minus 2i. So there's uh, my two values for b. Now they're telling me a and b are real numbers, and now I just need to go off and find the values of a. So now find a. So I have my b. And don't forget, if we come over to the left-hand side, how did we write a? We wrote a as 6 over b. So I'm going to use that knowledge over here. So remember that a is equal to 6 over b. And I'm basically going to sub in my values for b. So I have a is equal to 6 over positive 3, and a is equal to 6 over my negative 3. And that's going to give me a is equal to 2, and a is equal to negative 2. And they want our complex number in the form a plus bi, a plus bi, and when I fill that in, I get a as 2 plus my b as 3i, and I could also have negative 2 minus negative 3i. And they are my two complex numbers in the form a plus bi. So now we're looking at question 1c. 
use De Moivre's theorem to find the three roots of z to the power of 3 is equal to minus 8. So when we're answering these, we need to first of all turn our complex number into polar form. So basically what we want to do here is we want to turn minus 8 plus 0i, so I'm bringing in that placeholder of, a, of an i, uh, equals or times cos theta plus i sine theta. So that's what I just want to do. I want to change my 8 plus 0i into polar form. First of all, I need to do is find my modulus, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is giving me my a, which is my real part, which is minus 8 squared plus my b, which is my imaginary, which is 0 squared. Uh, minus 8 squared is 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. So my or is equal to 8. Now I need to get my argument, or my theta, my angle. And my angle is found by finding the tan inverse of b over a. So tan inverse of b over a, which is 0 over minus 8. Now if you go to your calculator, this is going to throw up an error for you. So what we have to do is we have to sketch out what this would look like on our um, on our Cartesian plane. So I have just a very rough sketch here. So I have my reals and my imaginaries and our complex number is minus eight zero i which will be back here. So this would be my complex number. And what angle is that? Well if I'm starting and I go backwards I'm going back 180 degrees or in radians I'm going back pi. So my angle there is equal to pi or 180 degrees. So that's what I have to do. I have to sketch it in order to find my argument. So filling in my, my information. So I have my original complex number, eight plus zero i is now equal to eight times cos of theta plus i sine theta. Sorry, that should be a minus 8, shouldn't it? It should, and I have it at the top of the question there. Minus 8 plus 0i is equal to 8 times cos theta plus i sine theta. Now, the question wants it to the power of 3, so that's minus 8 to the power of 3 is equal to 8 times cos theta plus i sine theta. Now, in order to get, isolate that power of 3 or to eliminate that power of 3, I need to multiply across by a third. So I'm going to change that. I'm multiplying both sides now by the power of 1 over 3. So 1 over 3, and I have to multiply the right-hand side by the power of 1 over 3. And on the right-hand side now, that's the side I'm going to look at, um, when I multiply 8 cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of a third, uh, we're now going to use our De Moivre's theorem for that. So your rule is in your log table. So what it tells you to do is you bring down the power and you multiply it by your or, and then you multiply your angle, cos um, <clears throat> one third multiplied by pi. Now I need to get all possible values for my complex number. So here now I need to add on plus two n pi for all possible solutions or rotations of 360 degrees, plus i sine multiplied by a third, times my angle of theta, uh, or sorry, of pi plus 2n pi. So that's my full rotation as we said. So now in order to solve this, we are going to look at what the power is. It's z to the power of 3. So we need to test this now for n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2. So I'm now going to come down and sub in n as 0. So n as equal to 0. That's going to give me, so a to the power of 1 third is 2. So that's going 2 times cos 1 over 3 times pi. When I put in my 0, let's put it in just for this one. So again, that'll just turn out to be uh, 0, but we'll do it nonetheless. Plus i sine 1 over 3 times pi plus 2 times 0. Okay, so when we evaluate that, it's going to work out as 2 multiplied by uh, cos 1 third theta is coming out as a half on my calculator. Just make sure your calculator is in radians, plus i 1 over 3, or sorry, 1 third square root of 3 over 2. 
multiplying in my two, so two multiplied by half is one, and two multiplied by root three over two is just root three i. So there's my first complex number. I'm now going to do the same thing again for n is equal to two. So n is equal to one, first of all, sorry, not two, um, which is going to give me two times cos of one over three times pi plus two multiplied by one multiplied by my angle plus i sine one over three pi plus two multiplied by one multiplied by pi. Okay. So this is testing it for n is equal to one. When I evaluate that, I get two times cos of one over three multiplied by uh, three pi, wouldn't it? So that's giving me minus one plus zero i. And multiplying into two, that gives me negative two plus zero i, which is just the same as uh, negative two. So there's my second complex number. And I now need to test it for n is equal to two. So n is equal to two, and I go through my motions again. So two multiplied by cos one over three times pi plus two multiplied by two this time. Plus i sine one over three multiplied by pi plus two multiplied by two. And that is going to give me two times when I go to my calculator again, just make sure it's set in radians, it's giving me a half minus root three over two. And when I multiply in my two, that's giving me uh, one minus root three i. So my three complex numbers are one minus root three i minus two, and one plus root three i.